So hi, I'm going to talk about Travis CI. Um, before we get started, it's, the effect is not going to be that great because the room isn't really full, but I would please like everybody to stand up. Like really stand up, everybody get up, thank you. So who tests their code? Like, uh, you know, just keep standing, you know, everybody else sit down. Who works on open source and tests their code? Everybody else sit down that doesn't. So that's a pity. You should be working on open source. Then who uses a continuous integration server for their open source code that they're testing? Okay, please keep standing. And finally, who runs, you know, whatever language you're using, be it Ruby, be it Java, be it PHP, who's actually testing against multiple versions of these languages? Okay, so keep standing. And finally, who's giving all that infrastructure to their users that want to fork their open source code so that they can also test against multiple versions of whatever language you're using. Okay, so whoever is still standing now, they might not need Travis. Everybody else needs Travis, okay? So obviously there are lots of continuous integration solutions already like Jenkins and so on and so forth, but what makes Travis so neat is that number one, it runs on the cloud, I don't know, your, not your infrastructure, so it's somebody else's problem to run it, uh, somebody else's problem to scale it, but most importantly, it's super easy to use. So here's an example of, all you have to do is you add a file, .travis.yaml, um, you specify the language you want to test against, in this case, we're testing against Clojure, and then, you, for example, you said, you know, I want to notify an IRC channel, you can notify an email, or whatever. So that's, you know, that's all you need to do, and then, it does whatever, you know, is standard for, for a closure project to run the tests. Now, something more complex, uh, Node.js. So here, we're looking at, you know, testing against multiple versions of Node.js, and these tests will be run in parallel, um, and again, you will be notified. Something slightly more complex for a PHP project here, we're testing against multiple versions of PHP, and actually, we're leveraging something called aliases here, so that's going to be automatically updated to the latest version, uh, actually, for PHP, we're, we're pretty up to date, so we also have all the latest release candidates of PHP on there, so you can test your projects against that as well. And then here we're using another feature called environments. These basically allow you to set up um, additional sort of matrix, uh, you can basically build up a matrix of tests. So what this will do in the end is, it's going to create an environment for MySQL and Postgres and run those tests then against each of the versions specified above. And all that that the end of my second uh, setting there does uh, is give you an environmental variable that you can then use in your before script routine, for example, to set up a database. You can also download some code somewhere, compile that, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then here, the script line, this is something that you can optionally do for each language we have a default. For PHP, that will be running PHP unit, for Java, J unit, et cetera. But you can customize that. In this case, we're you know, using a custom uh, PHP unit XML file for each of the databases. And then we're uh, adding code coverage. And again, you know, notifications, email, campfire, whatever. So that's definitely easier than setting up Jenkins. So really, what Travis is, is kind of like what GitHub uh, was for coding. It's social continuous integration. And the idea being that um, the target audience is to some extent it's library authors, but more importantly, library users. Because as a library user, you want to know that whatever code you're using, that if you're updating one of the pieces in that puzzle, that things keep working, you know? So you don't want to, you know, update and then end up like this. You want to be happy, right? You want to be really happy. Um, and, you know, you know, just making the world a better place. Uh, right now, Travis has over 10,000 users, 13,000 repositories, about 3, bu uh, 300,000 builds, and that equates to over a, or about a million test runs. So that means the average build is actually using a matrix of three, right? So they're you know, testing against three different language versions, three different databases, and things like that. And we have about 6,000 builds per day. Supported languages, we have Ruby, Erlang, Clojure, Node.js, PHP, Python, Scala, Groovy, Haskell, Java. Um, so quite a ni nice list. Uh, most of these support multiple language versions. I think for Java, it's 
just happening right now, more or less, that we're supporting multiple versions of Java as well. Other languages, you know, whatever comes along, Cocoa, .NET, whatever uh, people uh, bring, it's an open source project, so anybody that wants to add something, and that also includes a new database. Like, uh, I mean, so natively, we already have, uh, you, know, you know, the popular SQL databases, but also CouchDB and things like that. Somebody comes along and says, I really think that Neo4j should be available for everybody right away. You know, just, you know, send a pull request. Um, Speaking of pull requests, uh, we now have a really nice feature, which basically means um, we make this green button uh, a lot more useful. So right now on GitHub, when you see the shiny green button, right, you really want to press it, but you never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, you don't know if the tests are passing. More importantly, you don't know if the tests will be passed when they are merged to master. So what Travis now offers is actually to run the tests for you with them being merged to master. So you know, thanks to the Travis bot, if the tests are passing, if that green buttons, if you press it, that it actually is going to pass. So this is what it looks like if it fails, you just get a comment. Uh, if somebody pushes again, Travis bot comes along once more, uh, updates the status and things like that. So really you can use the shiny green button with confidence. In the future, right now everything is basically you get a new virtual machine uh, instantiated uh, using Ubuntu. Um, in the future, we are looking into also supporting Fedora and other architectures, maybe even Windows. Who knows? Uh, also, right now, we have workers dedicated for each of the differing languages, and in the future, we, we want to look into um, maybe uh, making that you know, less bound. For example, the Ruby language itself is on, uh, on Travis. And that's actually, it came originally out of the Ruby community. And so one of the problems is that they have a gigantic matrix that they're testing against, which basically means that, you know, they log, you know, clog up uh, all the, their workers, uh, while other languages might not be, you know, as busy at that moment. The next thing that's obviously missing right now is built artifacts. So if you want to do something like uh, uh, coverage reports and things like that, um, currently, the only thing that stay, sticks around after you run your build is whatever you log to the console. So you can't do like HTML reports and things like that. Um, and obviously, there's actually a script, like an after uh, script that runs. But if you want to upload that content somewhere, you would have to you know, put your password in clear text somewhere, which is not so nice. So we're looking into you know, making that pass possible to have some sort of secret that allows you to upload that somewhere. Or we might offer some storage space of our own to move whatever artifacts you generated. The next big thing is Travis Pro, which would be you know, also adding uh, support for private repositories, which currently are not supported. Um, and this is actually sort of the business model. Uh, I should say that I'm sort of part of the Travis team as an evangelist for, especially in the PHP community, and also helping Travis ensure that they're you know, prepared to really deal with everything the PHP community needs. But I'm not part of the core team. Uh, the core team is about three people. They're actually sort of working on this full time. Um, and that's sort of their business model for the future to have Travis Pro. Um, but in the, you know, the grand scheme of things, it's all about you know, really offering something for the open source community. Um, you know, offering you know, happy rainbows and unicorns and love, things like that. Um, and more importantly, it's all about empowering open source developers to really uh, you know, bring and, 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 and shine a light on what they're doing and ensuring that, you know, people see the, the investments that they're doing in terms of quality. There are a bunch of corporate sponsors to, uh, already, um, but more importantly, there are also a lot of uh, users that are uh, donating to the effort. Um, and so there's love at travisci.org if you want to donate. Um, currently, this automated testing of pull requests is limited to people that have donated, but the, the sum that you have to donate it is not fixed, so you can you know, donate a small amount of money. The main reason why it's limited is currently still you know, being tested, and also that you know, we need to slowly grow the servers to actually handle the load of all the pull requests being tested. And that's, that's it. Um, so uh, Travis obviously is on Twitter, um, on IRC. And you can check out all the code. There are actually some example repositories also on the GitHub account where you can see how everything plays together. Um, and that's it. Thank you. OK. Is there time for questions? Yes.
Um, is there a time limit on how long a build can last for? Yes, there is. Um, I think for the pre-build script, it's like 15 minutes. For the unit test itself, it's like 10 minutes. Um, we are sort of fiddling with that. The main reason why we have a limit is just that we want to prevent people from, you know, clogging up the system. Um, we have, for some projects, actually increased that time, uh, time limit, you know, because they explained to us that it just takes longer. Uh, but, you know, that's usually just done for very big projects. Um, but, yeah, so there is one. Hey. Is there a plan to support Selenium? So, actually, there is already Firefox installed by default, so you can put Selenium on there and, and run that. Uh, however, Selenium tests do have a tendency of running, running really long, so you may run into that time limit, uh, but yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, regarding that, the business model and, and the kind of usage of the servers, is like, like if, if I do want to have an like uh, integration test that lasts like half a day, is, is there a plan for kind of having a pro account that, that, that can pay for that? Um, I don't know exactly the business model about the Travis Pro, but that would fall into that most likely. Um, in theory, I mean, all of it is open source, uh, so you could set it up yourself um, and to leverage that. However, sort of the architecture is really designed for being hosted as a service by the people that know the stuff intimately, uh, very well. So it's not designed really to be you know, easy to install yourself. Uh, it really is designed as a service. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly the business model that they have in mind and they haven't announced anything. I think Travis Pro, they have a closed beta at the moment, but I'm actually not part of that, so I don't know how it works and things like that. Okay. So, thank you for listening. <laughs>